All right, buddies. So let's take a look at how this install is going. So we saw the initial walkthrough. We saw what it looked like. It still kind of looks like that. However, I wanted to give you guys the initial next steps. So in my opinion, and opinions do vary, the next step should be sorting out your equipment and sorting out your circuits. So what that means is we have different types of circuits here. We have audio circuits, we have data circuits, we have video extender circuits, um, coaxial, audio cable, and category cabling comprises everything. Now, you can branch them into one long main pipeline or you can branch them out. I like to branch them individually. So data on one side, audio on another side, maybe HDMI or HDMIs separate. Um, so I like to branch my circuits. That would be the next step is branching these circuits and deciding what's gonna go where. So we're handling the, the logistics basically, circuit wise as well as equipment. I'm also going to decide where my equipment's gonna go. Once the equipment is in place in the correct you know, order or fashion or whatever you wanna call it, once the equipment's on the stand where I want it and once my circuits get organized, I can then start to wire this thing up. Uh, the wiring is going to include terminations. Um, also, one other thing here. So, if you notice, we ran four new audio circuits. The reason is they ran an RG59 for the sub. They ran two RG6s for the other two sub locations. The RG59 I can't terminate with my RCA heads. I don't even know where they got the RG59 cable from. It's just too small. The compression fitting won't work. The, it just won't work. So, I ran a fresh sub line with RG6. I also decided that this is kind of not audio cable. I'm pretty sure that this is like some sort of uh, landscape lighting or, or some type of, you know, not full voltage, but low voltage, uh, low voltage cabling because let me get a piece of it to show you guys. Yeah, so this is an example of it. This is a piece of that cable. Dude, look at this cable. It's got like six fat strands. This is probably not audio cable. I mean, I'm not really an expert <laughs> on metallurgy, uh, but I should know enough about cables to look at this thing and say something's wrong here, man. Usually a good quality audio cable is about 60 to 70 strand count. You know, you want oxygen free, high strand count audio cable. That, the malleability, I mean, this is like, Look at, look at the memory on that. I mean, this is not any audio cable I've dealt with it before. I'm pretty sure it's not audio cable. It looks like it's low voltage circuit cable, more prone to like HVAC wiring or fire wiring or even landscape lighting. So we decided to build fresh audio circuits for the front three speakers, which we didn't plan to do, but you can totally see the difference, man. I mean, there is so much more strands in, in a real audio cable. So, we ran new circuits. We're gonna get all our circuits uh, prepped. We're gonna get all the speakers wired in, prepped, and then we'll start wiring in the equipment. We'll take you guys through the steps on that. See the old runs and the new runs. One other thing is we had a really bad noise coming from this speaker. Now, there's three different types of ground when it comes to an audio system. There, you have earth ground, you have signal ground, which is audio cable, you know, cable to cable or signal to signal ground. And then you have chassis ground. It seems like we're introducing noise into this speaker. And I am suspect that running this audio cable, most likely with the Romex wiring right here is the cause of this problem. So we shifted the new line over. We're gonna try this location. We're gonna fire up the system. If we're still getting the noise, we'll figure it out. If we're not getting the noise, it's because they ran this right with the Romex cabling. Um, that and because this is an audio cable, it's probably not shielded appropriately for the application. So right now, we're still getting our circuits in place. We gotta get our equipment lined up. Once we do that, we'll, t we'll check back with you guys and show you how it's going. We also have to do new bailing. These uh, balance, dude, anything on Amazon, just stay away from it, honestly. It's not worth your time. You're gonna end up wasting, you know, two or $300 on this nonsense. Get a real bail on an HDMI extender and call it a day. I understand nobody wants to drop four or 500 on an HDMI extender, but when you don't run an HDMI cable or you don't have someone who knows what they're doing to a pre-wire, that's the boat you're in. Oh my gosh, 
Is that the Dream Media van in my neighborhood? What? Wait. 